Welcome to everyone to AZ Bio Peers. Um, this time we're going to be talking about advancing health innovation in Arizona. And we have a very special guest with us, Russ Yelton, who, among other things, um, serves um, as a member of the Board of Trustees for AZ Advances. And you're going to hear about AZ Advances a little bit later in the program. I also want to make sure that everybody knows about some fabulous opportunities that we have here in Arizona. Arizona Bioscience Week is next week. So if you have not signed up for at least one of the seven events happening during Bioscience Week, you're missing out. There are going to be fabulous presenters, programs, a special message from Governor Hobbs, um, videos of this year's honorees, looks back at some of the exciting things that have happened in the last 20 years, and the AZ Advances Health Innovation Showcase on Thursday. Many of the AZ Bio Award winners, past and present, are going to be speaking on panels, and you're going to be learning about amazing things. Plus, um, and Russ has heard me say this lots of times, I sometimes get a little tired of hearing how hard it is to grow a bioscience state like Arizona because everybody flies over. And so it's so hard for our companies. So um, I asked a friend of mine to come in and talk. And on Thursday, the keynote after lunch is going to be Michael Chambers. And Michael um, had a great idea for a company in Fargo, North Dakota. And he built that company into a multi-billion dollar powerhouse that got acquired by Danaher. So if an innovative entrepreneur can do that in Fargo, North Dakota, we shouldn't have any problem building multi-billion dollar companies here in Arizona. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, but first, Russ, would you just um, introduce yourself to everyone and just give them a, a quick Who's Russ Shelton? <laughs> sure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, excited to have you all here and discuss this topic. Uh, as uh, Joan said, I'm uh, one of the trustees of uh, AZ Advances, uh, also current past chair of uh, AZ Bio. Uh, do a fair amount of work uh, with the Flynn Foundation and others. And I think over the time that I've been in Arizona since 2009, watching the growth of this sector, all of the companies and programs and people coming together. Um, it's just been really fantastic. And we're excited about AZ Advances. We believe this is another piece of the puzzle as we all come together and look forward to having this discussion with you today. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us, Russ. Okay, so now I am going to share my screen to give you all just a kind of a view of where we are and where we're going and how we're going to get there. So as we look at um, Arizona, right, AZ Bio is celebrating its 20th anniversary. That's 20 years of our members making an impact in Arizona. The exciting thing is that um, it's not just about looking backwards. It's about looking forward. And so the AZ Bio Board of Directors um, over the last several months have been working on their strategic plan. And that strategic plan is focused on doubling the size of our life science industry by 2033. Now, to put that in perspective, in 2021, which is the last year that we have data for, Arizona had generated 38.54 billion dollars from its life science sector in one year. You hear lots of times where they say this program generated that kind of uh, impact in 10 years or in five years. This is one year. And that's a lot. But What's very important to keep in mind is we are ranked for economic impact nationally at number 20. So if we're going to double the size of our industry, that should put us very close to or inside the top 10. And when we do that, that's 77B. 
billion dollars in economic impact in one year. That is why as we talk about some of the programs we're going to be sharing with you today, these programs are so important because we will not achieve these kind of goals if we don't all work together. And for those of you that are going to be with us at Arizona Bioscience Week, at many of the events, you'll be able to get um, a pin, which is the same pin that the AZ Bio Board of Directors wears and I wear. Um, and it's an Arizona pin because together we're going to be making Arizona even greater than it is today. All right, so what did those numbers look like? So I, I told you that, you know, Arizona in 2021 had generated $38.54 billion. And look at how much we grew in just three years, including a pandemic. We added over $4 billion in economic impact year on year in just three years. So when we talk about looking out now a decade, we have the ability to hit those numbers if we all work together. When you look at the growth in companies, that's what they call firms, okay? When you look at the growth in companies, again, we added over 700 jobs or 700 companies. Employment, right? Look at that. Again, almost 7,000 jobs in just three years. So those are really, really impressive numbers. And that is why you hear that Arizona is home to one of the fastest growing and emerging bioscience states in the country. The challenge is, as we'll see in the next slide, everybody else is growing too. Now, as you look at the inputs, the things that help drive that um, growth, it's venture capital. So you can see how we grew from, from the 2016 to 2019 and 18 to 21. Again, a very respectable jump, okay? NIH funding continues to improve. Academic R&D, that was a big jump, okay? That's the combination of not just NIH, but other academic funding that's going into programs. So as you can see, we're making progress. And we'll have new economic impact numbers, um, hopefully at the end of next year, it usually runs on a cycle like that. Um, but these are the numbers that we're looking at as our baseline. Again, that's a lot of jobs, a lot of companies, a lot of funding and a lot of growth. But here's the hard part. Okay, remember I said everybody else is growing too. So here what you see is what our 2021 numbers ranked among the 50 organizations or the 50 states and two territories that get included. And the two territories are Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C. So um, when you have those 52 states and, and other, right, um, this is where we rank. So as I said before, we are 20th in economic impact. We're number 14 in number of companies. And that's cool because we're number 14 by population. So at least right now we're tracking on our population numbers. But we're number 22 when it comes to jobs. So one of the things that the AZ Bio Board of Directors um, started looking at all the way back in 2019 was how do we fix that? How do we get our employment numbers growing at the scale that our company numbers are growing at? And it's those inputs on the right side of your screen that make the difference, right? It is the amount of venture capital, the amount of investment that's going into these small companies. It's the funding coming from academic and NIH that is creating new ideas within our universities that can be spun out into the companies. So if we're ranked 25 out of 52 on the inputs, it makes that a lot harder to grow those employment numbers. And that is why some of the new programs that we're going to be talking about today were created. So I also wanted to, to just give you a feel because many of you have heard me talk about 
the amount of money that has been invested in the life sciences or biosciences, as lots of people like to call it, in Arizona over the last two decades. And that number is now up to over $27 billion. But the question is, where did that money come from and where did it go? So what you can see on this chart is where that money comes from and where that investment got focused. So what we've seen with philanthropy, there's been over $3.6 billion from local philanthropists and national philanthropists over the last 20 years. And that money has gone predominantly into discovery, think at places like TGen, the universities, or delivery at the hospitals, building up our hospital resources to support our growing population. Discovery at the federal level, that's where you see money coming in from NIH, NSF, um, all of EDA, all of the different federal programs. Um, and the majority of that money, over $5 billion, again, went into discovery, went into trying to figure out what if this might work? What if this might change? And so those discovery questions are essential to the future of our life science industry, and we are appropriately investing at that level. We also, here in the state of Arizona, are investing almost as much as is being invested by our federal partners. Over $4 billion has been invested over the last 20 years, and part of that is TRIF the Technology Research Initiative Fund that was created in 2000 under Prop 301. And that is now an essential engine that has contributed over $1.6 billion into research and discovery at Arizona's three state universities, ASU, the University of Arizona, and NAU. So those engines are helping to create the companies that you saw Remember, we're writing number 14 for a number of firms. So that discovery is popping out these little companies, and that's amazing. Big companies and industry are doing their part. The largest investor over the last 20 years was organizations. It was companies like BMS and Medtronic and Betson Dickinson and Roche down in Tucson and others that have built facilities have expanded their footprint here in Arizona and are continuing to be, you know, great partners. And, you know, it's kind of interesting how those little companies can attract those big partners. So a great example is Exact Sciences. So Exact Sciences acquired two small Arizona companies. Combine that with licenses of new technologies that they um, entered into with TGen and are now expanding their operations here in Arizona. So I went and looked at some numbers, and it's nice to see that Exact Sciences over the three year period was the number one new, net new job creator in Arizona for the life sciences. So those two little companies combined with research that came out of TGen and discoveries at TGen were put together. And that is what is helping to grow a new global partner here in Arizona. Now, the other thing that's really important is how that will impact patients. Because patients are the reason we do what we do. And in the case of that, part of exact sciences, they are developing new tests to allow patients to be screened for multiple cancers at one time. So it used to be that all, almost all of our cancer tests were single tests. We tested for colon cancer. We tested, which exact sciences is famous for, but we test for colon cancer. We test for breast cancer. We test for lung cancer with spiral CTs. There's all different ways that we test for individual cancers. But the goal of multivariant genomic testing is to be able to test for lots of cancers at one time so that then our physicians know where to look. 
because there are a lot of cancers that hide inside us and they don't become symptomatic until it's too late. And so these new tests will truly be lifesavers and they should end up being cost savers too because we can then you know, move away from having to do a separate test for everything. So that is a really great innovation and it's being done right here in Arizona and Arizonans are building it, creating it, discovered it, are developing it and are gonna be delivering it. And that's the goal. And Joan, if I could add, I'd listen yes. to him the importance of the TRIF funding, uh, not only to expand research and discovery, but that private investment that you're talking about, the follow the lead of that type of investment in our state in these technologies. So the TRIF funding, I believe, is really, really important and it's something that we got right and that we need to make sure that we continue because it will drive that private investment. Absolutely. Now let's talk about private investment because this is the area where, quite frankly, we have a problem. So private investment, what you see there is just under $1.7 billion has been invested in Arizona life science companies over the last 20 years. And this is based on um, data that comes out of PitchBook and, and is um, reviewed by Techonomy Partners. Colorado generates that kind of investment every year not over two decades. And 20 years ago, when we were really starting to focus on the biosciences, so were they. So as we look at how we look at the inputs that create the outputs that make the impact, that is why we're really focusing on development as the area that will bring Arizona into the top 10 by 2033. So the first way to do that is in partnership. So as I've said before, nobody can do it alone, especially Little Lazy Bio. But Little Lazy Bio has some of the most amazing resources in the state because we have a board of directors of 35 leaders who together bring expertise in every single facet of our life science industry. We have supporters, sponsors that help us provide programs and events. And we have philanthropic partners that will work for, with us to create new things. So in 2019, AZ Bio got a grant from the Economic Development administration of the U.S. Department of Commerce to create a new seed fund structure and growth engine in Arizona. Being a 501c6, it, AZ Bio has some limitations on what it can do. We needed a nonprofit partner who would work with us to build this program. And that partner is the Opportunity Through Entrepreneurship Foundation. So AZ Bio worked with OTEF for short um, to create AZ Advances. AZ Advances operates under OTEF. So that allows us to take donations from the community, donations from philanthropy organizations, um, apply for government grants and other things that AZ Bio alone might not have been able to do. Um, more importantly, the Opportunity Through Entrepreneurship Foundation has is an Arizona-based nonprofit that has been working in Arizona to help entrepreneurs since 2005. So they've been working on these types of programs almost as long as AZ Bio has. And so they were a great partner. So what do we have inside of AZ Advances today? And where do we want to go from, from here? So the first thing we have is the AZ Advances Talent Program. Because if we're going to double or grow our workforce to the level that it needs to be at, we have to have a whole pipeline of people that are ready to step into those companies. And so the AZ Advances Talent Program actually does several things. 
it hosts the Student Discovery Zone at the AZ Bio Awards, which many of you have participated in, and I hope I'll see many of you at this coming um, next Wednesday. Did you know that over 1,400 students have now gone through that program? And some of them, because it's been going on since 2011, some of those students are now working at the FDA, they're leading companies, they're participating in our local companies, they've gone on to become um, professors. It's an amazing program. And that is part of AZ Advances now. In addition to that, we have the opportunity for those same students to compare, compete in that poster session for scholarships. And if you wanna really be amazed, go to the AZ Bio Awards and talk to some of these students. They are so smart and they're our future because long after I'm out of the industry, they're gonna keep going. And so it's so important that we support them. The last thing that we looked at was internships. And I want to do a shout out to all of the organizations that are helping with internships. The Flynn Foundation, Helios Foundation, TGen, the universities, they are all doing great work to create learning um, opportunities for our students. Our major corporations also have internship programs and they're doing their part to create opportunities for our students. Unfortunately, even with everybody working together, we don't have enough internship slots for our students, especially working inside of companies. Working at a university in a university lab is a wonderful experience for a student. Working in a hospital lab is a wonderful experience for a student. The challenge is it doesn't have enough diversity of types of opportunities that a student can learn if they're working inside of a small business where everything is happening in a small team and they can get that exposure. Our small businesses, I have a waiting list of small businesses that would love to have interns. The challenge is, is that it costs, just hard costs, $5,000 to provide one internship. So the way we provide internships today is um, AZ Advances and AZ Bio work together to raise the funds. And every time we get $5,000, we do another internship. But that's too slow. And so we continue to talk with grant funders we're actually hosting Pontecura, an event at the Arizona Science Center during Bioscience Week, specifically to raise funds for student internships next year. Because the ratio of students that are looking for internships to what we have available right now in Arizona is eight to one. That means for every intern that gets an opportunity, there's seven that don't. We need to fix that. And so the AZ Advances Talent Program is specifically focused on doing that. And if you go at after this program to azadvances.org, under programs, you can click on AZ Advances Talent and learn about the amazing programs that are being done to develop our workforce. The second focus of AZ Advances is developing our entrepreneurs. Again, we have terrific programs around the state that are focused on individual communities. The Flynn Bioscience Entrepreneurship Program, the i program that is focused on university entrepreneurs, the um, AZ, uh, Arizona Commerce Authority Venture Ready programs are all great programs. But for the most part, they are not specifically focused on taking an entrepreneur through the steps that are necessary to go from idea to development and into full delivery. That takes a much larger community. And that's where AZ Advances draws on the strength of AZ Bio and its very, very strong base of over um, 280 companies 
with executives in every facet of the industry to tap into those resources. And so we partner with AZ Advances to help the companies that go into those programs. AZ Bio Peers is an example of how AZ Bio and AZ Advances can work together to continue to promote and develop our entrepreneurial community. And then there's the big problem, and that's investment. So here's the challenge. We will not grow our venture capital numbers unless we grow our seed capital numbers. So seed capital is that early stage, very high risk investment that goes into a company that has an idea. It's designed so that they are able to do the proof of concept, to work on the market analysis, to do the early tests, to see if this might have legs. Because if it doesn't, they need to be able to fail fast and try again. Otherwise, they don't have enough money. They bump along the bottom until their IP gets too old and then nobody wants to invest in them. Now, we have some amazing angel groups here in Arizona. Desert Angels, ATI, um, and others are you know, committed to supporting our early stage companies. But I can tell you, as someone who has been an angel investor since 1987, yes, I am that old. Angel investors worked really hard for that money. And they are not going to place the riskiest bets for the simple reason that they have so many broader opportunities that are further along that they can invest in. So if there is not engines that will invest into these early stage companies and provide, sometimes it's $30,000, sometimes it's $100,000 that's needed, sometimes it's a half a million dollars that's needed depending on the type of technology that's de being developed to get them to the actual milestone that makes them investable. Then that angel money comes in and that makes them in, that is where they work on the next group of milestones that makes them investable for venture capitalists. And then the venture capitalist money is used to work on the next group of milestones that either grows them into a going concern or leads to an exit. And those exits can be millions to billions of dollars. But the reality is that at the earliest stage, one in 10 are going to fail. Of the one in 10 that made it through to the next stage, again, one in 10 are going to fail. And to the next stage, one in 10 are going to fail. And so what we start to see is as you move along the journey, the closer you get to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the harder it is to get there. And so it's critically important that we're providing the talent, the guidance, and the early stage funding to do that. Now, um, AZ Advances, as it was working under its EDA grant, um, did raise a little bit of money for mission-related investments. And at the AZ Advances Innovation Showcase um, on Thursday of Bioscience Week, so you know, just less than 10 days from now, um, we will be announcing the first three companies that have been invested as mission-related investments. It's going to help those three companies. It's not going to make the impact that we need, which means that we have to get creative on new ways to put more funding into the Opportunity to Entrepreneurship Foundation for the AZ Advances initiative so that we can escalate things faster. And so those three programs, developing our workforce, supporting our entrepreneurs, and providing that early stage high risk capital is how we will get there. Russ, anything you'd like to add? 
No, I just think it's all critically important because one thing builds off the next one. And again, to your point, we are blessed to have a lot of really good programs uh, across the state, but our focus obviously on our life science industry, specifically for our mission here is just critically important if we do want to grow and get. And if you look at, again, just the numbers that Joan has shared over you know the last little bit, we are getting there. We just want to get there faster. We need to get there faster because everybody else is running in the same race and it is a race for talent. It is a race for innovation and it is a race for funding. So we need to up our game. So one of the challenges is that Russ and I did um, some extensive analysis as we went through the EDA grant funding process um, on, on how much do we really need to, to, to drive that forward, to provide the funding for the three programs that we were just talking about. And it's about $10 million a year. And that is to, you know, provide the internships um, for students, especially, you know, um, students from diverse populations that don't always get the same opportunities as others. Um, you know, it, when my kids were growing up, if they needed to have an unpaid internship as their mother, I could say, go for it, because I have the ability to pay for their education. But that is not true for the majority of our students. And so if there's not a paid internship, they're going to be working at McDonald's. And they're not going to get the education and, and the experience that they need to help them move further along their career path. So $10 million a year and everybody laughs and says, well, that's nice. Um, but how do we do that? We needed a partner. And as you saw on the earlier slide, the state of Arizona has been an amazing partner for over 20 years as we've developed this sector. 25 years ago, it was an Arizona governor who established the bioscience cluster. 20 years ago, um, Governor Jane D. Hall created Prop 301 that then moved us forward um, through TRIF, right? The Technology Re Research Initiative Fund. When we look at Governor Brewer and Governor Ducey, both of them have made, made, made major investments relative to the life sciences and building up our university infrastructure. Governor Napolitano um, was critical in the passage of um, key R&D tax credit and angel tax credit legislation, which has had a huge impact on our life science industry. And now as we look at our current governor, Governor Hobbs um, has for the first time, expanded Arizona's seas. So if you ever look at our state seal, there are five economic drivers that have been on the state seal, the seal of the state of Arizona since its statehood was created. So what are they, right? We all know cotton, copper, climate, cattle, um, and so, and so as we, you know, go across that, she has added two more C's for the first time in over a hundred years. That's chips, which by the way, semiconductor technology plays a big part in med tech innovation and care, creating the health innovations at, that are discovered, developed, and delivered to the people of Arizona. So we now have two new C's, chips and care. But how can we do that? And so we looked at um, using a three-year best practices study, looking all over the world, talking to leading innovation centers. And we determined that if this really is going to change Arizona forever, then the funding has to be forever. 
And so we went to speak with um, Senator Gowan, who at the time was head of the Senate Appropriations Committee, and provided him with all of the data and explained the challenge that we were facing. And um, the idea of creating a permanent endowment managed by the state treasurer that as it grows could fund three specific things in Arizona forever. Health innovation being driven by workforce development, supporting our entrepreneurs, and mission-related investment. So the state cannot do mission-related investment. Okay, there's something called the gift clause. It does not allow that. But the state can support nonprofits who are doing programs for economic development. And so um, there was an open RFP for nonprofits after this bill passed to um, apply to be the state's partner for the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund. And AZ Advances, through the Opportunity Through our Entrepreneurship Foundation, was selected as that partner. Now, here's the hard part with endowments. Endowments have to mature for five years, which means that the money that they put in in 2023 won't start providing support for these programs until 2028. And then as more money goes in, hopefully as it's appropriated from the state or it comes from federal funds or from philanthropy, um, that combination of public and private money will continue to grow. When it reaches our target of $200 million, yes, I said $200 million, um, then it will start generating at $8 million a year. And then we can work with the community, with funders, with grants, um, and other things to get us to the other, that other $2 million a year. So as we continue to grow, we need to continue to focus not just on what we need today, but that path forward for the future that will benefit the people of Arizona. Russ, anything you'd like to add? Uh, you know, it just these things take time. They're complicated. Um, we've looked at many other models, uh, other groups as well uh, throughout this process. And this, I believe, really does establish you know, an evergreen fund long term. Uh, all those interns that we're trying to place and those young people, this is funding for their companies, for their research uh, out in the future. And, you know, we have all these patients who need this again. That's why we want to push faster and do this now. And by starting now and putting this in place and under a lot of work that Joan has done here in her leadership, uh, we believe this is a really strong path forward. Thanks, Russ. So before we go into the Q&A, um, you know, I wanted you to see, this is going to be one of the slides that we're using at the AZ Bio Awards a week from Wednesday. And down at the bottom, you see the Arizona pin that all of our AZ Bio board members and partners as we're working on this initiative um, have. And we're going to invite everyone, over 500 people at the AZ Bio Awards, over 1,000 people participating during Bioscience Week to pick up the pin and become part of the solution to build a better, stronger life science and health innovation sector in Arizona. Because when we do, we will have healthier people. We will have a healthier economy and we will have a brighter future. So as we continue to move forward, we're asking all of you to be part of this whether it's helping with um, you know, donations, whether it is participating in events, whether it is participating in programs or providing homes for interns. Okay. Together, we can and will double the economic impact for Arizona's life science sector in the next decade. 
if we all work together. So with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen. And you're back to just little old me and Russ. And, and I had asked that you put questions in the chat. So please um, get those questions in there so that we can um, answer them for you. And, you know, Russ, as we continue to look at, um, you know, growing health innovation, and you were, you know, one of the leaders that worked with the Flynn Foundation um, on the Bioscience Entrepreneurship Program, which has had, you know, a huge impact. And, you know, it's been my pleasure to work. AZ Bio has worked with Flynn to administer that program now for several years. Um, what are some of the exciting things that you have seen come out of that program? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> where, where to begin? Um, I, I think that program, you know, and, and early on when we first worked with Flynn to start that, uh, I remember um, we established the program, we selected the first cohort, and I was asked to go in front of the Flynn board. And, you know, the question came up, it's $25,000. Did we move the needle? And the answer is on 25000 a little, not much. What the program actually brought was the connections and giving those companies the ability to be on the roadmap steering committee and make calls to those key leaders within our communities and expand their networks uh, with that. You know, and you we look back now and I think of companies like Neolite uh, that came through and Vivek and I used to spend a lot of time uh, with him and just the incredible innovations and things that they brought forward now. Uh, and, you know, some of the future things I not privy to share right now, but he'll have some other large announcements here shortly uh, that will greatly impact here in the state. So I think we have companies like that, that we have entrepreneurs that are persistent, they're diligent, you know, they have their ups, they have their downs. And as Joan said, you know, they're not all going to make it because we come together with a community with some of these key programs to address those issues as workforce on the internships, which I'm very passionate about and our young people really need and drive that. Um, you know, we're going to have those kind of successes that will help us double those numbers or maybe even more. Great. Thanks, Russ. So um, so Jamie had a question. So how do we increase the angel investment in Arizona? And then as a follow up, should we be sharing more announcements on social media to create more awareness? Who should we be targeting? So um, I'll start off on this one. So. Um, Jamie, as, as I shared earlier, um, as an angel investor who has written a lot of checks, and please, guys, don't all email me after this and say you want money because as the CEO of AZ Bio, I can't play favorites with my kids. So um, I am, I'm parked right now. So um, a, AZ Advances has a process, but um, I am not personally investing in life science companies right now. So how do we increase that? The way to increase angel investment in our life science sector is to have more investable companies. Okay. There is not a shortage of funding at the angel or at the VC level around the country and in Arizona for good investment opportunities. The question is, how do you define a good investment opportunity? And so what they will look at is the team. Has that team brought a product to market before? Has that team executed on a plan before? Has that team um, you know, successfully made a, a return for investors? That's what an investor is looking for. Then they're going to look at the technology. Then they're going to look at where it is. Okay. But if the team is not there at the earlier stages, okay, the checks will not be there either. Now, that takes us back to seed capital. Because with seed capital, that is where you're getting the proof of concept. That's where you're building the early team. That's where you're starting to bring people together. That's before you're investable. And that's where Arizona has a deep hole. And so because of that, it's, you know, I get so excited when I see these young companies spinning out of the universities 
and out of the hospitals and out of the incubators. But if they, we don't have funding for them, it's cruel. It is just cruel. And, you know, they are cobbling together grant money. And then when the grant runs out, they run out. Um, and, and let me tell you, there's usually a gap of six months to a year between federal grants. If you get the next one. So, you know, if there's not this early stage investment, it's a problem. Our universities do a great job of working, um, you know, with university researchers. Flynn Foundation has an amazing program for university and hospital researchers, which, by the way, is open for applications right now. But once they get kicked out of the nest, they're landing in a capital desert. And that's what AZ Advances is trying to address. So, so that's the first piece. The second piece, which is, you know, social media. Again, the, the first rule of social media is to know where your audience hangs out. So for the most part, ultra high net worth individuals that have the ability to act as angel investors are not hanging out on X, formerly known as Twitter. They may be on Instagram, but they're not there necessarily to see company pitches. Um, so you have to think about creative ways to get them excited. That's why Arizona Bioscience Week was created, which we are you know, deeply indebted to the Arizona Commerce Authority, who's been the presenting sponsor on that since we started eight years ago. Um, you know, we have, um, as a matter of fact, it hit my mailbox last night. Um, today, there are 25,000 copies of AZ Business Magazine that have been dis delivered to business leaders across the state of Arizona. And in that magazine, there are 64 pages talking about the biosciences. It is the largest special supplement that that magazine has had in its history. Okay. That's how we educate, that's how we reach people is, is with that kind of information. Now, the other thing that's critically important is Bioscience Week, right? The best way to get people excited about this industry is to get them to come and show up. And that means you reach out and you invite people who don't know about the industry to be your guest. That is another way to, to create you know, great opportunities. Um, but LinkedIn, again, is always a great way and always telling positive stories, whether it's from the Easy Bio website where we search for them, post them, and you can share them from there. The universities have some great resources for doing that. Um, it never hurts to tell good stories because you never know where they're going to show up. Um, but we really need to focus our, our targeted efforts on educating the, the, the target audience as opposed to the broader audience. Um, let's see here. While you're doing that, John, I'll just add one thing too. Yep. You know, for a lot of these companies, as Joan said, you know, early investors are looking at the team. So if you have expertise in the area, volunteer to be on advisory board, volunteer to be a mentor, use some of your expertise to help these early stage companies really build those teams that become investable because many of us have those connections and it's not asking for a check for that, it's asking for your time, which for some of these companies, it will be a major factor on whether or not they become investable. Yep. And um, Aaron, just I, I encourage you to look at, at, at the chat, Aaron Sterling just put a great testimonial up um, from his company, EMR Data Cloud, talking about the impact that the Flynn Foundation um, had on helping them get started. Um, and they are currently an, uh, a Flynn Bioscience Entrepreneurship Program participant this year. Um, okay, so Peter writes, in the life sciences, we, we've also had a challenge finding flexible shared lab space for starting companies. Can, you know, we can save money um, to be used for, can we use the Innovation Trust Fund for lab facilities? It is not designed 
for lab facilities. Um, however, we do have a number of commercial partners that are looking at developing um, incubation space, flexible lab space, things of that nature. You know, the um, 850 PBC has some of that space available right now. CEI, you know, it fills up fast, but they also have, you know, a slightly longer term lease opportunities. Um, the Alum Center um, is working out in Scottsdale on a number of programs. ACTI in um, Tucson, at, partnering with the University of Arizona, has programs like that, where the Health Innovation Trust Fund and AZ Advances will be able to plug in is to be able to supplement the programs and the resources that are available by those um, real estate and, and um, incubator facilities. So the goal would be to have programs that could supplement the work that they do, um, but we're not planning to be in the real estate business. Russ, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, well, yeah, those are all great programs and options. And, and I've seen this for a decade that, you know, we need that next level. So when we started CEI, that was great. But where do they go next? So, you know, the 850 downtown, uh, Tucson uh, concept companies in Peoria now is working on a 46 acre new development uh, that hopefully will be under shovel in a couple months will come out. But yeah, this is an area that for a while uh, has been a challenge. And hopefully that the trust fund will be able to come in, as Joan said, not as a direct investment on the space itself, but the programming so that those groups that are building the space can focus their money on that and we can assist on the programmatic piece. And, and more importantly, if we're creating stronger companies that are investable, then they can afford to go into those types of facilities. And when we have more companies going into those facilities, when you fill them up, then the next one gets built. And a great example of that is 850 PBC with their announcement um, that NIH has taken an entire floor of, and now the PBC is full. And because it's full, Wexford will now start work on the second tower. So that's the way it works in the real estate development world. Um, you have to have the business case, you have to show you have the potential tenants. If we don't have companies that have been grown to the level where they can pay rent at facilities, even if it's on a flex program, okay, then the programs aren't going to get built. So, um, you know, basically, we are working at the seed stage to get the early stage companies, AZ Advances, um, by definition, is not allowed to go in anything beyond a Series A. So it's seed rounds, it's convertible debt rounds, it's bridge rounds, um, and possibly a Series A because of the way some companies are structured. But companies that have raised millions of dollars, that's not where we're going to be focused. Okay. Um, Anthony shared that he um, has you know, experience with economic development organizations and what programs do we recommend that someone like him could get involved with to help grow the bioscience industry? Well, I, I can tell you that, um, and, and Russ knows this from experience, um, if somebody tells me that, that they want to help, okay, I'm going to put them to work. So, um, you know, a great way is to get involved with AZ Bio. Um, the AZ Bio Pierce program is going to be starting up again in January. Um, and Dylan PA, um, Dr. PA runs that program and he'll be av available to, to talk about mentor teams. Um, we have um, a number of real estate development organizations and construction companies that are part of AZ Bio and they are always looking for people that they can talk to to gain insights on how we can build the industry so they can build more buildings. Um, and then of course, um, our economic development agencies. So from, you know, Claudia Whitehead at the city of Phoenix is an absolute rock star. Um, get to know her. Um, Venture Cafe is coming up on Thursday. It is all focused on the biosciences. I'd be willing to bet money she's there. Um, and that event is free, right? You, there's no excuse not to go. And so um, there will be a bioscience focus there. Dylan will be there. So you can look for Dylan. If you're not sure what Dylan looks like, go to the AZ Bio website and uh, under the About tab and click on Staff, and you'll see his picture. And um, you want to get involved in helping with AZ Bio peers, talk to Dylan. There's a link there. So there are a lot of different ways to get involved with AZ Bio. There are a lot of different ways to support the incubators. 
Um, Arizona Commerce Authority has their Venture Ready program where they're always looking for volunteers to participate. Um, the, the one thing I would say to anybody on this call or anyone that's listening later, okay, the best way to get plugged in is to show up. Show up at the events, be at Arizona Bioscience Week, read your AZ bio in the loop that you get every Monday. Because if I'm going to spend my Sunday night writing that, you can at least spend five minutes scanning it on Monday morning. And so as we continue to move things forward, look at how you can get plugged in, meet people, talk to people, bring more people with you. Um, we make the pie bigger as we grow our community. And that's how we're going to achieve our goal of doubling by 2033. Russ? Yeah, I think Joan's correct. Uh, you know, show up. Those are great groups right now uh, with ACA. We're in the first round of judging uh, for the Innovation Challenge. So they're always looking for judges. You know, you can go to CEI, uh, you know, look at mentoring. So there's a lot of places to show up. And again, another shout out to Venture Cafe. Uh, we typically have 150 to 200 people there. As Joan said, it's free. Uh, it's short presentations, which works well for my ADD. See it quick, ask questions, go to the next thing and a great place to network. Great. So we are coming up on our last minute, and I want to really thank everyone who um, you know got involved today. Um, we did not get to all of the questions in the chat, um, and I will um, reach out to the folks that, that didn't have a chance to get that feedback. Um, but again, things to put on your calendar. Okay, If you're going to be in the greatest Phoenix area this Thursday, it's Bioscience Night at Venture Cafe. Show up. Next week is Arizona Bioscience Week. Go to the website, azbio.org. Under the Events tab, you will see Arizona Bioscience Week. There are seven events across five days. You can get engaged on leadership discussions with some of our leading women. You can get insights on drug development hosted by the University of Arizona at Piper on Tuesday. The AZ Bio Awards on Wednesday, right? Meet our amazing students. Hear from the amazing innovators that are at work right now. And um, I'm so excited. Russ, Tom Grogan is coming. And Tom Grogan, for those of you who don't know, was a physician who had an idea on how to help the patients that were waiting for pathology information. And he was a pathologist and he couldn't do it fast enough. So he got together with some engineering friends and got out a yellow pad and started working on a solution. That solution became Ventana, Ventana Medical System. And Ventana got acquired by Roche for $3.2 billion. And Roche has continued to grow that facility here in Arizona. And today, Tucson, Arizona is where the headquarters is for Roche Tissue Diagnostics globally. Okay. One entrepreneur with a great idea or a big problem they're committing to solve literally can change the world. We just need to figure out how to help them do it. So thank you, everybody. Join us again next week or next month for AZ Bio Peers. And more importantly, thank you for supporting AZ Bio over the last two decades as we all work together to make Arizona a top 10 bioscience state going forward. Bye, everybody.